Moving on to our final presentation, um, ArcGIS Solutions for Local and State Government, an overview. This is coming to you from Jordan Miller from Esri. Mr. Miller joined Esri in 2016 with an extensive background in local government industry knowledge, as well as years of experience working in the private sector. Jordan works with all levels of local governments in Wisconsin and has been working heavily in solutions and technology practices for land information public works operations, law enforcement, fire, and EMS with a focus on real-time um, IOT and situational awareness concepts and mobile applications. Mr. Miller holds a BS in Geography GIS from the University of Wisconsin River Falls, as well as an MS in Sustainable Community Development, also from UW River Falls. Take it away, Jordan. Awesome. Can you hear me okay? Thumbs up if you're good. Good. All right. Good deal. Excellent. Yeah, those those bios always sound like a lot of pressure when you read them out. <laughs> so let me go ahead and share my screen and uh, we'll kick this thing off. Let's do that one. Beautiful. Okay, give that just a minute to, to warm up here. So today I wanna talk a little bit about um, solutions for state and local government. Um, you know, there's there's, these types of things have been around for a while, but I think it's important to, you know, talk about it a little bit because obviously, you know, as the technology changes, so does the capabilities that we can build into these solutions. And those types of things are going to change as well. So today, I think we'll spend a little bit of time talking about solutions. So really just to understand what are our GIS solutions. And then why solutions? Why, why are solutions even part of the conversation when we're talking about the ArcGIS platform? So to do this, I think it's fair to discuss, um, you know, where they fit in the platform overall. Um, and then I want to spend a little time going through some navigation of solutions. Um, some of you might be familiar, some of you might not. Um, if, if you are, it's a good chance to, to brush up. If you're not, maybe... Uh, it takes some some good information away. Uh, then I'll talk a little bit about getting started and then the road ahead for our solutions. So let's get into a little bit about what um, these solutions are. So these solutions can come in in a couple of different flavors. Um, there's solutions for managing your location-based data, you know, whether they're data models for um, utility network, address data management, um, parcel fabric, um, 3D base maps, things like that. There's, there's a lot of different solutions out there um, that are really focused on helping build out uh, a data set if you need some, some help with you know, developing schemas, um, figuring out what type of data you want to start to um, enhance or, or, or work at. Um, you know, there's there's solutions for analysis. You know, with um, you know, Pro becoming more and more mainstream as as new development gets added to it. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of different tools that that we can develop solutions for that take advantage of the great um, tools that that um, ArcGIS Pro has. Um, this can be you know specific toolbars for crime analysis or um, different capabilities that would then get translated into some of the different applications um, through the editing web maps and, and whatnot. Um, developing and deploying um, operational systems. So looking at more operations specific um, solutions um, for, you know, this can be asset data collection. Um, if it's at the state level, dam safety, there's election solutions. Um, you know, vector disease solutions, capital project planning solutions, the, the list goes on and on. And that that's the idea here today is I, I don't want to sit and, you know, throw there's a solution for this, there's a solution for that, there's this and, you know, all that fun stuff. I mean, I'm sure you guys can jump on the web and figure any of that stuff out that, that you might want to. Um, the idea here is just to really talk about, um, you know, the intent of these solutions and, and you know, again, where they fit and, and why they're really that important. Um, and then there's also solutions for public engagement. 
Um, we know in, in local government that that is a, a key part of, of what we do and the services that are provided to, to the constituents. So making sure that there are very strong solutions and especially with, again, enhancements in web GIS, um, there's a lot more that we can do here. And there's a, you know, a lot more capabilities that we can start to leverage some of that great data that, that you guys have. Um, so really, you know, to, to round that out, there, these solutions, they use ArcGIS to understand challenges that you might be facing and also help you mitigate those challenges. I think we all, you know, not to, to, to beat a dead horse, um, but, you know, I think in a year ago today, you know, we, we were probably thinking a little bit different, but, you know, as of last March and April, I think the, 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 the solutions that got rolled out for, you know, public information for coronavirus, uh, business continuity type solutions, things like that, um, they really started taking a forefront. And I think that showed the agility of what some of these different solutions can provide to different organizations. So the, the reason for this and the, the reason for some of these different solutions, and I just wanted to break it down in, in a couple of different buckets here, um, just to talk about why, you know, it's, 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 also, it's all fine and well if, if you tell me something, but you know, if I can understand why, sometimes that, that makes things make a bit more sense. And really what we see in, in local government, and you know, I met a lot of you, um, I've worked in a lot of other states in the Midwest here, and I, I can say that some of these challenges are, are not super unique, um, but I think it, it justifies taking this type of approach in a, in a lot of different cases. So one thing that I think is, is pretty, pretty fair to say is that demand is likely on one department. So I think with, for you folks who um, you know, have strong GIS backgrounds um, that can be in the land information office, can be in land conservation, um, you know, but potentially could be weak in, in other departments. And that puts a lot of pressure on those folks that have the ability to do these different things or have the ability to um, make all these great tools with the um, location information that you guys have. So another thing is there's a limited understanding of you know, what an organization possesses within that technology stack that you guys might have through Esri. And again, this, I think this is this is more not this is not a knock on anybody. This is more of, you know, sometimes folks don't know what they don't know. Somebody who, you know, works with GIS every day and sees what they can do with, um, you know, a good data set and a dashboard is will completely, you know, blow somebody's mind if they're from a department that's not familiar with these types of tools. So what happens in in situations like this is. Um, sometimes you see a lot of redundant systems. Um, I think that's, that's very fair in, um, you know, the, the market space of local government is there's, there's a lot of different redundant systems out there that, uh, can be, I don't want to say centralized, but, um, you know, you can, you can reduce some costs and budgetary costs by, by looking at a solution focused approach first. Um, and moving targets, you know, these departmental needs, um, these local government needs, they are moving targets, things change. I know if, you know, day to day things seem to move slowly, but you look back over the course of a year and everything's changed. And for some way, shape or form, even though it feels like Groundhog's Day every day, you know, sitting here working from home and not out there interacting with you guys, um, things are changing. There, there is, there are moving targets, there's changing expectations and, the, the services and information that people expect to have. So with our solutions team, they, they focus on these changing expectations. They focus on addressing racial equity. They focus on changing transparency and law enforcement. Some of these, these hot button topics that um, you know, folks in, in local government are, are faced with every day. Um, we, we have teams that are, that are also trying to address these problems and uh, allows you to become a bit more um, responsive um, versus proactive. So it, it gives you some added agility to where, you know, sometimes it takes time to think out a complete plan. And sometimes if you just have, 
something that'll get you 90% of the way there. Um, the rest is uh, a bit easier. So like I said, none of this stuff is really new. Um, I think there's some, you know, headlines out there that, that summarize the, the, you know, the changing landscape of expectations, the changing landscape of technology, um, business challenges, the, 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 the common types things that, that we see as justification for a solution first approach. I mean, again, this is, this is all nothing new. This is more or less just a, just an emphasis that, um, you know, these, this is, this is what we, we base these solutions off of. And, you know, GIS has evolved. Like I said, day to day, sometimes it feels like nothing changes, but even in the past, um, five years, I'll, I'll just break it down to that. I mean, we've seen a complete change. Um, you know, portal was in its infancy five years ago. Um, you know, open data was uh, an FTP site where you can go and, and download zip files, you know, things like that. So these things are changing in technology. Um, it's, it's, it's a lot to keep up with, especially, you know, in, in our case, GIS. Um, we're looking at um, a platform where we're more web focused now than we, we ever have been. Um, we're using servers to be a, a complete base deployment of, to act as a, as a hosting server, a place to develop applications, um, to federate your enterprise geodatabase with. Back, you know, again, five years ago, it was a standalone server site that would enable you to run an enterprise geodatabase. You know, things, things are changing quickly. And so with that, it, it allows us to change these solutions really quickly too. Um, where we can try to intersect what's happening in the business of local government to technology. So as these, these evolutions um, in, in needs and demands change, or even evolutions in data. I mean, Adam did a great job with the, that demonstration uh, about visualizing LIDAR and some of the information products that you can derive from LIDAR. Um, so having a supportive technology that can um, allow you to utilize these data sets that are changing and the, the sensors that we're using are changing so much quicker. So um, again, it's, it's, uh, it's trying to find that, that happy medium between um, you know, the, the business needs and what technology can really do. Um, so the, the mission for this is to address the common set of business needs. Um, so if you're not familiar um, with our solutions team, or if you are, then, you know, you can suffer through this, but I'll try and make it quick. Um, the folks on our solutions team come from all sorts of different backgrounds. I work from, fo or I work with um, people on the solutions team that come from a background in local government. I work from, uh, with somebody on the solutions team that comes from a, you know, a law enforcement position in Boston. I mean, the, the range comes from all over the place and the idea is to, to have that perspective and they try to um, help us develop these solutions in order to, to give something that's useful to, to you guys, the users. Um, and again, the, the, the goal is to deliver maps and applications quickly throughout that organization. So um, this will, you know, ultimately, you know, align with current and future releases, which would avoid, you know, legacy technology. I think in, in some cases we, that, that is another, um, you know, common business challenge that I think, you know, goes without saying, but how often do we get um, version locked on, you know, limiting our ability to update to a new system because another associated system um, prevents us from doing so. I th I'm sure we all have our horror stories about that. Um, but there it's, it's, it's the reality. So by, by keeping our solutions current with um, the current release and future releases, it, it avoids that issue. Um, unlocks that geospatial platform so it can be leveraged by many. This is, this is kind of a, a big one here. Um, you know, it, it doesn't do you a whole lot of good to have, you know, the best data set in, in the state, but it sits on your desktop and it doesn't reach an intended audience or it, it doesn't allow people to understand that data and develop more questions or have a better understanding of the of what you're trying to show. So um, gets that data out there, gets it in the hands of a lot of different people and gets a lot of different people involved. Um, and again, not only internally, but um, that's community-wide. 
so the public as well. It does this with an approach, and I, this is uh, the, the diagram. I'm sure <laughs> you guys have seen this a time or two, um, but, but I wanted to just, uh, I think this is standard for any ESRI presentation is to show you guys this diagram. Um, but I think looking at it this way, this, this, this can capture it pretty well. But you can look at each component of this system, this conceptual diagram, and you can bolt on a solution to that. And I think that's, that's, pretty, that's a pretty powerful message. So at the database level, you can leverage a data model focused specifically on a certain data type need. So again, that can be the utility network, that can be parcel management, um, can be you know, any of the you know, predefined schemas for asset data collection, things like that. Um, can be solutions in enterprise or RGS online for the applications. Um, or hosted services, if that's the route you want to go with. Um, it can be used in Hub Basic or Hub Premium. Um, there's templates out there, which I'll show you here in a demonstration, that um, directly leverage solutions. These, these templates themselves are solutions, but they address kind of a, a larger, broader goal, whereas an app-focused solution might be a bit more specific in its, in its intent. Um, I see the chat flashing a little bit here and there, so I'll, I'll try and get back to those. Um, I'm not a good multitasker, so <laughs> I just go silent reading the chat. So I'll, I'll try and get to all those once I'm done here. Don't worry, there's nothing pressing at the moment. You're good. Okay. I'll let you know. People just throwing tomatoes. That's all right. Virtual tomatoes. No, <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. Um, so again, to, to we won't spend a whole lot of time. I'm not going to make you suffer through me reading through each one of these these different solutions. But I think the the idea here is just to emphasize that there are a lot of very focused solutions for um, multiple different different departments to to expand that use to make the most of the technology that that you own um, and really get the most out of that um, out of that investment that you have. Um, again, that can be in elections. I know Wisconsin as a state does a lot for elections and redistricting and things like that. Um, you know, so, you know, maybe for more of an outreach type solution with dashboards and whatnot. Um, public health. I mean, in, in public health or in, um, you know, public works, I understand on the asset side, that might be um, a bit different story. But, you know, expanding that use into those different departments, again, to, to maximize that investment that you have. Um, this can follow along the lines of, you know, different trends or different specific needs that, that develop um, as, as time goes on. I, you know, 2020 was a challenging year for everybody. It still is showing its lingering um, um, effects, but, you know, having that resiliency to um, you know, take advantage of some of the stuff without any custom development is, is, is a good deal. So state government, same message holds true. Um, you know, across that entire spectrum, there's solutions focused for each one of those common repeatable patterns that uh, our solution team has been able to, to diagnose. Um, public safety, that's, that's one that's been coming up a lot, especially under, under fire and law enforcement. Um, I, I may have talked to a bunch of you um, on the, the webinar right now about just that, but there are, um, there's a growing interest in, from fire and, and law enforcement um, around some of the different things they can do with GIS. So if you're not talking to those folks um, or if some of those folks are in the room, it's, it's, it's a good, good conversation to have. Um, so let's get into the show me part here. And I'm gonna try and do this without completely annihilating my, my layout, what I have going on. Let's try, I might have to reshare. So I'm gonna just start off uh, with our solutions page and is this showing is the solutions page showing or do i need to reshare my screen you might need to reshare because it's still the show me part gotcha okay let me just do that quick um here we go so our solutions page has changed recently um so you know one way or another this this might be beneficial just to to get a an idea of how things are, are put together right now. Is that is that solutions page up for everybody now? It is. Awesome. 
So it used to be our solutions gallery um, and uh, solutions.archeis.com. Um, but now it's, it's, it's kind of rebranded a bit um, into, sorry, I got, I got ahead of myself one tab here, um, into more of a, um, a better experience for, for that user to, to go through and, and understand and find the information they need about specific solutions. Um, there's, there's a couple of different ways you can deploy solutions. You can do it right from your RGIS online account, or you can use the solutions deployment tool in RGIS Pro. Uh, to give you an idea, if you wanted to launch the, um, a solution directly from your RGIS online account, which this is a, a pretty slick little way to do it, um, through your app launcher, you just come right down to solutions here. You hit that button. Um, I'm gonna, well, little things in the way. And what that does is just gonna bring you right to the, the solutions launcher. And you can select what sector you'd like to, to look into. And let's just say we want to look at a public work solution. Come down here and you know just see, see what's available. It's, it's always good just to see what's available. Um, so for the purpose of this, try and find a good one. Let's just spin up the, the, the capital project planning. And while this is while this is going, um, I'll, I'll talk about a couple of other things. So what this is going to do, just to just to give you a little extra information, this is going to start to put together all the different um, feature layers, all the different web maps, um, the feature layer views, a public view, editable view, um, things like that 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 you're going to need to um, go into um, working on your solution. The next thing while well, that's going through and cooking is um, I want to talk about solutions in the in like in an initiative space. So what that looks like for you know the use of solutions in let's just say ArcGIS Hub. And you know, this is there's similarity um, across hub basic or premium um, in some of the different templates, um, solution templates that you can use and initiative templates. If you wanna think about an initiative versus solution, you know, an initiative is essentially a collection of solutions that focus on a broader challenge. So again, I'll, I'll restate that in, in, you know, over the past year, I think a lot of people potentially on this call or a lot of um, RGIS users in general um, got a crash course in, in using some of these different solutions um, through like the initiatives um, for the coronavirus um, public outreach solutions and potentially some of the business continuity solutions that um, got spun up and, and made available in, in pretty quick order. But if we go through and take a look at some of these, you know, we have, you know, things for um, helping with our volunteer networks for adopting catch basins or bus stops. Um, or for reporting um, different issues they might see around <clears throat> um, your city or county. And if we click on one of these, what we can see it is we can get a quick preview of it um, just to go through and see what that initiative looks like and some of the different um, applications that you know, are cooked into this initiative. So those solutions get cooked into this initiative so we can um, kind of use them at, again, a, a much more uh, broad scale. Um, so if I want to go back and take a look at some of these, and I'm gonna try and do this in a couple of different ways here. So I have one spun up. Let me try and do this without closing the, the Zoom controls. I have a fun way of popping up right when you want to close something down. Um, okay, looks like it was successfully deployed. So if I click on open there, what that's going to do is it's going to pull me into, you know, just a, an item description of that solution itself. So you can see all the different contents of that. So um, web maps for pavement moratoriums, um, external agency projects. Um, capital project plans. So this is a this is a um, a set of information products organized organized into groups um, that's going to allow you to you know 
pull in sewer project plans, water project plans, facility project plans, other plans, park plans. There's a, there's a lot of plans. Um, and then all that is also wired right into different groups for project review. So we start to think, you know, as, as we're visualizing, you know, the reach of these tools across a broader audience um, internally, uh, that can be through, you know, it's not, it doesn't have to just be desktop. It can also be, you know, web applications. Sometimes people just want uh, a system where they can review a plan in this case and go ahead and check some boxes if it fits, you know, certain um, ordinances and things like that. And it's, it's past the review process and, and be done with it. So having a, you know, a plan, um, project review type application to support that. Then we might have decision makers who, you know, just want a dashboard. They just want to see all the different approved plans, things that are in the pipeline, um, things that are under review, um, stuff like that. So again, these, these solutions fit a number of different um, access types and personas, if you want to use it that way, um, versus like, in a, you know, a concept like identity when you're thinking about accessing the platform. Um, but, you know, either way you, you look at it, uh, there's, there's going to be a lot of different touch points, but by using the, the solutions deployment tool in ArcGIS Online, it's going to go ahead and execute creating all these different feature services, web maps, applications, dashboards, groups, permissions, views, all that fun stuff, and spin it up right in your organization. So if you come back over here into your content and they're probably going to see a whole bunch of um, junk in there. So I'll just open up the capital project planning folder um, where this was um, created in. We can again see all the all the different um, bits of um, data that get created, the, the web maps, web mapping applications, so on and so forth that really facilitate using that full solution. And Again, what it allows you to do then is if we um, we can go into the solution components itself, but what if I want to go in and open up um, that solution and start to wor work with it? So generally when you spin one of these up, there's also a, um, a component that is a ArcGIS Pro project package. And I have one opened up right here. I'm gonna stop sharing and pull over this other screen so I can try and do this as seamlessly as possible. And what we'll do is we're gonna look at um, the solution for adopting a catch basin. So as if, if you notice when I was going through that solution um, deployment tool in ArcGIS Online, um, one of the solutions I had already um, spun up was the uh, the adopt a catch basin solution. So again, there's there's multiple different parts of this. There's you know the part on the public side where they can go through and adopt a catch basin. There's the part on the internal side where you can review applications, and then there's also dashboards that represent work done, so on and so forth. But it really captures that that holistic look at all the the different touch points across that solution that you're going to have. So a key part of this is the um, the GIS specialist or you know the GIS guru whatever whatever these names are going by these days um, there's there's going to be a desktop component of this that's going to allow you to to manage that authoritative data and really you know set up a lot of these key functions that you know require more of a, a desktop look so in in the if you navigate to your your portal tab in Pro and I go to my Adopt a Catch Basin folder. Um, we see all the different contents um, associated with that particular project. If I go to the project itself, um, what you're going to have is a set of predefined geoprocessing tools and some scripts generally. I mean, it, it depends on what solution you, you fire up, but there will generally be a, a set of pre-cooked um, geoprocessing tools um, potentially a couple scripts in this case for um, sending out some some bulk emails and things like that that are you know just trying 
try and make the development of a solution like this uh, a bit simpler, a bit easier for you guys to you know, not be, be so, you know, overwhelmed with, uh, with different types of um, tasks that you need to do. That was a good segue because the next thing we're going to talk about is tasks. Um, and the tasks included, if, if you've worked with tasks at all, maybe some of you haven't, um, but if you haven't worked with tasks in ArcGIS Pro, uh, I'd suggest checking it out. And using solutions, deploying some solutions, configuring them could be a, a good way to expose yourself to, to using tasks in ArcGIS Pro. But essentially what these tasks are going to do, um, think about it just like helping you manage the, the appropriate workflow to execute the, the desired outcome here. So um, we have a task for understanding adopt a catch basin. And this task is aggressively simple. It just <laughs> explains what the solution is trying to do. So we can click finish on that. Um, but the next steps, as you can see, it's laid out pretty, pretty clearly. Um, we have configuring the adopt to catch basin solution where uh, there's steps for loading your data in there. And potentially we can use some um, append data options. We can copy and paste in there. Um, we can field map some different things if you have existing data, um, or we can wire this out to, to use whatever data you want. Um, then we can set up the user table, publish the web tool, configure the adopt to catch basin, and then um, go through and configure setting up those scripts with these tasks. So it takes a lot of the guesswork out of it. Um, a lot of that time it takes to figure out how to um, build a wheel when, you know, sometimes if, like I said earlier, if, if you can get 90% of the way there or heck even 75% of the way there, that's a big win. They, they can take a lot of time um, and give it back to you to, to focus on other things or to, you know, figuring out how you want to personalize this or make it your own or enhance it in any way, shape or form. So again, it lays down a great foundation um, to address some key concepts of a, a business challenge or um, a, a problem that we're trying to apply a solution for, um, but then also, you know, give you that, that additional um, bit of information and, and guidance just cooked right into that solution and ready to go. So you can spin these up, you can take them down, um, you know, do whatever you want with them. And then, you know, again, it's, it's all part of the, the, of your licensing that you generally already have. Um, some of these have a couple of different um, requirements like this one needs an SMTP server, but you know, for the most part, it's just uh, either ArcGIS Online or ArcGIS Enterprise. So let me just take a minute to catch my breath and because I tend to talk really fast sometimes. So I'm just going to have a drink of water and slow down. And let's close out of Pro. And let's take a look at what um, the solution would look like for um, for the capital project planning um, hub template. So, you know, in some cases, again, we and we're not going to spend a ton of time on this, but in some cases, these solutions can be generated um, and really the old, you know, two birds, one stone kind of thing. Um, if, if there is a, an initiative to take advantage of a, a stronger web experience um, to put some of these solutions forward um, as, a, as an overall greater initiative, um, we can start to use some of these templates. And by um, opening up Hub and kicking one of these things off where we want to implement a new initiative, what I can do is um, either spin up a blank one or go to these templates that I was just um, looking at there and activate this initiative. And what that's gonna do also is it will create all those different groups, all those different um, pieces of information that you're gonna need to have an effective um, deployment of hub that you can, you can put out to the public and, and make a lot of these, again, information products accessible and ideally achieve that goal of you know expanding the the reach of that data and in a lot of cases that data does not come cheap 
So it's, it's good to get as many people using it and uh, really allow it to, to be as effective as it can be in, uh, in your organization. So we don't need to sit here and, and watch this, uh, this loading bar spin if, um, if we don't want to. Um, I think, you know, overall, you guys get the idea of, um, you know, how quickly and, um, and seamlessly you can, you can take advantage of some of these different solutions um, and, and get them going in your own organization. Again, without any custom coding um, for the most part, unless you want to, sometimes that stuff's fun, right? Um, but if you, again, just wanted to have some agility, um, you know, go to some of these different departments in your organization that are, you know, making these requests and things like that and be able to get a quick win and, uh, you know, leverage some of the solution templates. I think, you know, that, that should hopefully give you some time back in your day and, uh, you know, give you some, some flexibility to do some other things. Again, a few of these things have changed. Um, we'll go through the what's new here towards the end of this uh, slide deck. Um, but, um, oh, did I just get, I may have just stopped sharing. Oh, it looks that was... like it's still sharing to me, but it's pro. Okay, uh, it just I, I, I had a flashing light said, uh, I wonder if my network's getting all crazy. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually intentionally stop sharing. I'm gonna pull up the slide deck again. I'm gonna reshare and let's let's get back into a few of these slides here. So, you know, I didn't want to, you know, spend a ton of time going through and, and having you guys watch me hack on a keyboard or, you know, set some different data properties around, you know, you, you all are, are well aware of how to do those different things. You know, the intent was here just to just to show you how that experience has changed and and how sophisticated these solutions have become. Um, and again, through the development of the technology itself and the capabilities that, that we have in both RGS Online and RGS Enterprise, um, you know, you can you can take a lot of advantage of this. So, how do you get started? You know, there's there's a couple of different ways to, you know, think about this. Um, you know, really when, you, when you're planning on how to launch a successful solution, again, this can be sometimes you gotta, you know, shoot from the hip a little bit if it's, if it's a pressing need, but if you have the time, you know, you can spend on envisioning the, the project ex itself, what you can do is, um, again, leverage these solutions to, to get you, a head start, um, you know, figure out what the problem is that you want to solve, uh, figure out the first version. And sometimes the first version of that is going to be the, the solution itself off the solutions page. And then as you're going through and testing it, um, you're going to get that feedback from the users and it's going to allow you to better understand and plan on what enhancements to make. And then that'll again, allow you to act. So you know, development cycle or, you know, the, the, the feedback loop or however it goes for, for getting these launched and, um, and, and stood up in your organizations, you know, that this can take, uh, you know, a number of different steps, but, you know, really effectively the best way to get started is either to, you know, install the, the, the solution deployment tool or go into RTS online and um, start to navigate that, uh, that, collection of templates it's all well documented these are all supported solutions um you know i think with the with the transition into the new um website experience and some of the new versions of these solutions there some of them are starting to um be deprecated but um again all that stuff is 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 well documented so you can follow along and see some of the different deprecation schedules and whatnot um you know there's there's a lot. Um, it, I, I miss not being able to be there with you guys because sometimes we could we could take a few minutes and talk about some of these different solutions or you know some of the different ones that we've seen in Wisconsin. I, you know, just just from my perspective, the the stuff that I've seen over the past, well, since we last got together, um, you know, it was, it was funny the last time we got together in in Middleton last year, and we were doing the the hands on workshop with with some of the um, dashboard technology. And I remember that's when, uh, 
Johns Hopkins had their, their coronavirus dashboard that they just stood up and, you know, people were starting to pay attention to it and things like that. And then that first case was in Wisconsin and uh, at the end of February last year. And now, now look where we are, but, you know, I've, I've had a chance to work with a lot of you over, you know, this, this past year, just, you know, in different ways, but the things you guys do with these solutions is again, if, if you start with it as a template and evolve it into something of your own, whether that be the, you know, the, the, the COVID dashboards or whether that be some of the different um, configurations of the templates that allow you to, you know, do citizen problem reporting or, you know, you know work with volunteers or, you know, share out land information information it's it's really incredible you know there's there's a lot of really smart folks in the room and uh, you know I, I just think it's 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 fun to talk about how, how you guys are using these different templates and, and taking advantage of this but you know if, if you're just getting started or you want to learn more about these different solutions or maybe get hung up on some different things I know you know as they change some of the some of the the concepts change you know being able to you know, use a hosted feature service, but have it act almost like, you know, a, a version bit of data where, you know, you have a, a hosted view off that hosted feature service. So some of those different concepts are changing and these, these, these solutions leverage those different concepts. And on top of that with some of the arcade um, language and, and whatnot for symbology and some of those uh, pop-up graphics and things like that, it's, uh, you know, sometimes you get hung up. So, there's there's some great documentation there's a great community and you know to be to be fair to that team they a lot of the development that that you know goes into these new solutions is is based off that feedback of you know what they see and what they're seeing on geonet and you know what the users say they want um you know this technology is a pretty user-centric technology so um always open to, to, to having opinions shared or, um, you know, hearing about some new ideas for things. So let's talk about what's new a little bit. Cause again, I, I mentioned, you know, things are changing, things have changed, you know, so on and so forth. But on our side, as far as being agile to, you know, the demand of, um, or the changing of expectations of, um, you know, what people on the public want to see, we're, we're spinning up new solutions and making them available. Um, I know there's, there's been a lot of development lately in, um, in like asset data collection um, and, and things like that, uh, being able to take advantage of new solution configurations that leverage field maps, um, you know, in the direction we're going with our um, uh, field mobility, tools and you know what we can provide out to, to make that a, a better um, experience so there's been some uh, major enhancements as well uh, some of the key ones would be around so local government 3d base maps and crime analysis um, there's you know especially with the crime analysis toolbar there's always things going into that. Um, I've, I've met the group that, that has developed that, that toolbar and uh, they just got all kinds of great ideas to, to start to, to work with some of that um, location enable crime data and you know, provide out a better set of tools for you guys to use. Um, initiatives for Hub, this, this group is, is always quickly changing. They're always putting new stuff up there and addressing new things, um, you know, again, just, in time of year, whatever it might be, um, you know, there, there was a lot of energy put into um, outreach tools um, through hub initiatives for um, transparent elections. Um, again, the, 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 the coronavirus um, hub initiatives, the new one out there right now is um, the um, law enforcement transparency hub initiative that has a lot of really great solutions built into that hub, uh, hub template. So if, if you haven't had a chance to go around and explore some of those new templates that are out there for um, hub initiatives um, or some of the different, um, or some of the new things in the, the solutions, you know, maybe take a few minutes and, and pop open that new site, check out that, that new experience and um, you know, learn about a couple of these, these, these new solutions.
Oops, wrong button. So plans for 2021, obviously there's there's a lot of plans. Um, the, the one I mentioned was um, asset inventory and assessment. You know, this is just taking advantage of the new collection of, or the, the, the new approach to field maps and where that's going with, you know, collector, workforce, survey, one, two, three, tracker, all that, all that fun stuff. You know, there's, well, for a long time, we've had different configurations out there for, you know, collecting right away asset data. So, you know, looking at different ways to do that. Uh, vaccine distribution, we have a rich set of solutions for that. Um, I know that's a, a very hot topic right now. So if you guys are looking for more information on that, we can point you in the right direction. Um, if, if I can't answer the question, but again, Lots to come on that front. Um, it's always a good, uh, good thing to follow because, again, that, that team, their their whole job is just to figure out ways to to put good tools in in the hands of the users and make sure that the users are getting most out of their uh, out of their investment. So, a couple quick quick ugh, key takeaways. Um, there's there's a lot of different solutions that spread across many industries. Um, the idea is to enhance that implementation that you generally already have. And by making some of these, these tools available, it will effectively take some of that, that, that load off your plate to have to go through and, and, and think about and configure, um, solutions ad hoc. This is a great way to, again, to, to get you, um, you know, down to the five yard line or 10 yard line or whatever, um, football mentality <laughs> analogy we want to use here. Um, but it's also going to allow you to, um, you know, work collabor collaboratively with that community and, you know, using some of the different hub initiatives and, and public forward solutions that are available. Um, and again, being quick about addressing these problems, having agility, I think, in, in the technology space and in, especially in local government, ag agility is good to have. Um, again, the, you know, things, things are always changing and um, it's, it's always good to, to be able to, to have some agility in what you can put out there. And it, it, it hasn't been easier. I mean, this is, I know in the solutions deployment tool, I'll, I'll even take a couple steps back. I think what, like it was three, maybe four years ago, um, we had the ArcGIS for, for uh, local government service catalog where you could just grab that um, service URL and, and spin up a hosted feature service based on a template. And I thought, holy smokes, that, that is, that's wild. I can't even, I mean, it's just, it's just so much easier now because you don't have to go through and build a, a feature service and then publish it and then forget like, oh crap, I wish I would add this field or modified this, this domain or whatever that might be. Um, all that stuff's really kind of in the box now, um, modifying, you know, lookup tables, um, modifying schemas, things like that in, in a hosted nature, but also, you know, being able to, to use, uh, you know, federated services as well. Um, it's, you know, it, it really hasn't been easier and it, it's getting better um, as, as this technology matures and as, as we learn more about, you know, what, what folks are looking for in these solutions. So with that, I'd want to say like I, I genuinely do miss being at, at this conference um uh, miss you know the the conversations and things like that but I, I want to thank you guys for for allowing me to be here and, and at least in a virtual sense talking with you and um yeah hopefully um bringing some new information thanks a lot That's jordan fun. that was really yeah. good um i don't see any questions in the chat but um, feel free if anyone has some, we've got a good chunk of time before our break and then um, 1230 uh, town hall continuation. Uh, we got a question from Spencer. Are solutions used best when collecting new data or importing existing data to the solution made feature layers? Um. I'd, I'd say it's it's a split. You know, one thing that I will say when we are using um, those hosted feature layers that get spun up with a solution is that a lot of times, you know, and this is very user specific, 
that folks have some different ideas on how they want that data organized. So that's why I think it's, it's, there, there's good options for both, I, I guess, is, is the takeaway there. Um, you know, if you want to, it's, it's a great way to spin up a new layer and start to pump some data in and, you know, from the field or through whatever mechanism. But also, like I, I said, with, with each solution, there are tasks set up with that pro package that will allow you to import your data and field map it in case some of the scheme, you know, there's some difference in, in schema. You can retrofit it to make it work. Hopefully that was, that was wordy. That was wordy, but hopefully that, that was it. Okay. Any other questions? Sounded like um, Andy from uh, City of Sheboygan has deployed solutions, so he's also a resource. Mm -hmm. uh, if you, uh, he said, feel free to contact him for a demo. Yeah, they've they've done some great stuff up there at the city and at the county too with the solutions. Definitely. I mean, what what's better than finishing early on a Friday, right? I know, right? That's, that's, that's what everybody dreams of, but yeah, just don't want to say sometimes. <laughs> you can all get, go to, go get our lunches quick and settle back in for the town hall and awards and yeah. yeah. Outstanding. Well, hey, thanks again. I do appreciate it. And I hope everybody's staying warm, staying healthy and good things ahead. Thank you.